welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to go through some basic raster geoprocessing in ArcPy. So what you need to do is go to the Blackboard website and download this text file, Raster Geoprocessing Basics. And if you've closed your ArcMap application from last time, you'll have to set your workspace and then check out the Spatial Analyst extension and then from ArcPy import all the functions from ArcPy.SpatialAnalyst. So I'll execute that. Okay, here's one handy tool that we use for working with rasters that have been downloaded. And that's ArcPy Build Pyramids and Statistics. And what that will do is for every raster in this workspace, build pyramids, which allow for rapid display. And then for every raster in the workspace, compute the raster statistics. And that will help us in terms of contrast stretching for display. So we'll execute this tool. And basically for every raster in that workspace, it'll build pyramids which allow us to zoom in and zoom out very rapidly compared to if we didn't have pyramids built. And then also we'll have statistics for every raster. So for example, we have a float raster and the default symbology for the float raster is a percent clip stretch. So since we have statistics, we could say, let's stretch it based on a standard deviation. So let's do a mean plus or minus two times the standard deviation. So what that stretch means is all the pixels less than two standard deviations lower than the mean value will be jet black and all the pixels above two standard deviations away from the mean value will be bright white. And then all the ones between the two standard deviation range plus or minus two standard deviations away from the mean will be scaled using this grayscale. Okay, the CON geoprocessing tool in the Spatial Analyst Toolbox, CON stands for test a condition. So here our condition raster is our integer raster. And then if our query is true, it's going to return the pixel values from our integer raster. And if our query is false, we will return values of zero. And then here's our query, is the pixel value in this set of values one, three, or five? So we'll execute that statement and we'll create a raster object named new raster. So now we have a raster object new raster and I'll make the zeros black. So once again, our query was value one, three, or five. So if the value is one, three, or five, retain it. And if that query is false, make zero for those pixel values. So then everywhere there's a black pixel, that means the query was false. And those would be values of two and values of four and values of two and four. Okay, so this output raster object, new raster, if you look at the properties, it's a temporary raster. So if we go to source, its status is temporary. So basically that will automatically be deleted when you exit ArcMap. And the name of the raster is a cryptic name, and then it's stored in your default geo database. So if you want to save the output from our raster calculations, you would go raster object.save. So for example, if we want to save this raster, we would type in the name of the raster object and then save, and then whatever you want to save it as. So I'll save it as new raster tiff, and it will be saved to my archpy.env.workspace, which right now is a folder. So then if I look in our catalog and refresh that workspace, there's the new raster. So it's permanently saved to the hard drive. The set null geoprocessing tool is similar to the con geoprocessing tool, 
it's going to test a condition. So here our condition is, is the pixel value greater than 3? And if that query is true, it will set those pixels to value no data. And no data basically is missing values, and it will be ignored in subsequent operations for those pixels. So basically, we do set null. The raster, the query is going to query, and our query is value greater than 3. And if that's true, those pixels will become no data. If it's false, we return the original pixel value that was in this input raster. And then we'll execute that. And then we have the same named raster object. Once again, if we look at our properties for our new raster, under source, it's in the default geo database and it has a cryptic name and it is a temporary raster. And we could also type in the raster object and dot and is it a temporary raster? It is a temporary raster. Okay, so one question is how many of those pixels are now no data pixels in our test raster? So we can use the geoprocessing tool is null. And it basically looks at every pixel in new raster. And if the pixel is no data, it returns a value 1 because the question is, is it null? And if the pixel is contains a valid value, it will return 0 because is null is the question. So what we could do is we could go to our output test raster and go to properties. And then under symbology, instead of 0, we could replace that with a label. The label would be valid value. The label 1, that represents no data pixel. And then we'll give a no data pixel a red color and a no color for valid values. So here's my original new raster. And then here are the pixels that became no data. Here's my original raster, int raster, and here's the output. So everything in red became no data when we ran set null with this query value greater than 3. So we could double check. We'll go to our new raster symbology, and then we'll assign no data a value of red. So here is our new raster with no data symbolized in red. And then here is our test raster with no data symbolized as red, and they match perfectly. So we might want to know how many pixels have no data values. So we could use a search cursor and go to the second row and extract the count field and get a value of 40. But there's an easier way to determine how many pixels have a no data value. So what we can do is take the width property of our test raster, so how wide is every pixel, times the height property, how high is every pixel. That would give us the area of every pixel. If our XY coordinate system is in meters, it would be the area in square meters. And then if we took the mean, that would give us how many pixels have no data value. So then what is inside this variable? It's going to be an integer value. So there's 40. So there's 40 pixels that have a no data value. Sometimes we want to change the no data values to values of 0 or some other value. So to do that, we can use the con tool. So we'll con test the condition. Is this new raster no data? So for all pixels where the value is null, we'll change that to a value of 0. And otherwise, we'll just keep the original pixel values in our new raster. And then we'll execute. And then all those pixels that were a value of no data become 0. So then if we look at the attribute table, 
we've got 40 pixels now that have a value of zero. And those 40 pixels originally had a value of no data. Okay, let's imagine that this float raster represents elevation and we want to create points representing peaks for all the pixels that have an elevation above a value of 95. So we can use the set null pool. So the question is, is the pixel value less than 95? And if it is, they become no data. And if it's not, we keep the original pixel value. So then that creates our new raster object called high pixel and then we could say for that raster object what's the minimum value so dot m minimum so the minimum pixel value now in that raster is 95.47 meters of elevation all the pixels that have an elevation value less than 95 become no data so then we could take those few pixels that have a value above or equal to 95 and convert those to points. So we use the raster to point tool that's in our conversion toolbox, take our high pixels raster, convert all those pixels that are not no data into points. So then we have our points, and in this case there are zoom to layer, there's four of them. So there's a point up here that's a high pixel point, and all these are high pixel points. And then if we look at the attribute table, we have the original grid code or elevation value from those pixels that are now represented by points. In another application, we might want to know what's the total area in elevation above 95 meters. So what we could do is use the set null geoprocessing tool with our elevation raster, if the value is less than 95 meters elevation, make that pixel no data, otherwise return a value of one. So that will create a raster object high elevation. And in this case, it has four pixels with a value of one. Those four pixels represent pixels that have an elevation of 95 or greater. And then what we want to do is extract that value and determine the area. So what we could do is use a search cursor, get the first row in the table, and then pixel count will be our row, row zero, because here we said we just want the count field. And then the pixel area will be the height of our pixels times the width of our pixel. So then if we take our pixel count times our pixel area, we'll get the area of elevation above 95 meters. Okay, and we can do all sorts of raster map algebra. And what we need to do is first create a raster object from one of these existing rasters that are on the hard drive. So to do that, we'll create a raster object called pint raster, and that's going to be equal to raster function and then our integer raster.pif. So that creates a raster object we can do map algebra with. So once we have a raster object, then we could execute something like this. So that creates a new raster object called new raster. And basically what it does is it first has this question, is int raster greater than three? If that question is true, those pixels are assigned a temporary value of one. If it's false, it's zero. So this is one true, false is zero, times our int wrap, and then times 10. So the result is anywhere we have a zero, the question was false. So anywhere we have a zero, the question was false, and anywhere we have a value of 40 or 50, the original value was above three. So for example, all these fours and fives become 40 and 50, and all the one, two, and three, this question was false, so they become zero. So zero becomes zero, and that represents all the pixels that had values less than or equal to three. 
Okay, so we can do map algebra or raster algebra with integer rasters. We can also do raster algebra with floating point rasters. So we make a raster object called float raster, and then we'll take pixel values, divide it by 33.33, and then add one to it, and then use the int function to convert it into an integer raster, and then that will output to a new raster object called three zones. So now we have three zones where one might represent a low elevation zone, two might be a moderate elevation zone, and three would be a high elevation zone. Okay, so for next time, I'm gonna have a Blackboard question, execute this line of code, and then the Blackboard question will be about this raster and you'll execute new raster dot minimum new raster dot maximum and then once you successfully answer that blackboard quiz question it will lead you to the next video session